Hey, it's Drybear. Today we're gonna to talk about the best ways to farm experience in Starfield. But because I know people are different with different expectations, we're gonna go through three different methods today that might fit you depending on what you're looking for. We'll first go through the easiest method in the game that requires no upstart and will fit most players if they're just trying to casually level up. An intermediate method that includes killing and completing the requirements to level up your talents because obviously you don't just use the experience, you need to do the activities that required to get the higher levels of the perks in the game. And we'll end with the best method that gives the best possible XP per minute for people that just want to level very quickly or might be getting a new account that's or a new play that, through that is not leveled up to get it to a certain level so you can have the perks that you want or maybe you just want to get to max level and have every perk in the game. First, you should come hang out with me on my live stream. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. If you don't come hang out with me in the Twitch community, the next time you go to a vendor looking for a very specific resource, they're going to have one less than you need. So we all know that the perks exist in the game and there's skill points that you can use to unlock these and as you go through and complete them you'll have to do certain activities in order to unlock the next rank of it. So if you're looking to level quickly, let's go through the easiest and simplest method to level up in Starfield. And that is abusing the difficulty system. If you open your menu and go to settings and then go to gameplay, you'll see that there is a difficulty slider. You can change this at any point in the story. It'll adjust the HP amounts and the difficulty of the AI of the enemies. However, it doesn't adjust the XP values at all in the game as far as I can tell. It will give you a higher chance of encountering legendary enemies, which are just bullet sponges in most cases. So what you can do is you can set this all the way down to very easy and then go to a high density farm area where you can just kill lots of enemies. A couple of examples of these are going to be Jemison, which is in the Alpha Centauri system, which you get through the main story, it's just part of that. If you go to Jemison and land out in the wildlife, you'll find a metric bork load of these coral bugs all over the place. Now, depending on your level, this is one of the easiest ways to get XP set to very easy and just start mowing down hordes of these. Bonus points, if you really want to, you can go through and you can scan out uh, anything that you haven't scanned already, get XP from that, or pick up scanning missions as well. But it's a very easy way to get a bunch of XP quickly with almost no requirement at all. Another great spot with high density of alien wildlife is going to be the Schrodinger system. Relative to the uh, base starting system, you see Alpha Centauri is down here. If you go northeast past Narian and Cayenne, where you'll find Aquila, is going to be Schrodinger down here. And then if you go to Schrodinger and over to Schrodinger 3, where you'll be able to find a ton of wildlife all over the place, especially if you're on the lower difficulties, you'll have tons of things that you can kill, things that will come near you, especially if you have a ranged weapon. And what I love about the alien wildlife method, not only is it super easy to do, but you also get tons of organic material that you can use for crafting. Another planet with a bunch of wildlife is going to be a Cross from Schrodinger over to the Cerebri system. Go to Cerebri 2, and if you land down on Cerebri 2, you'll again find a very high density of wildlife that you can cleave for XP. They are absolutely everywhere on this planet. Another option, if you are interested in options, is coming up to the Sparta system in the top right of the, the overall settled systems. Here's Cayenne, and down here is Alpha Centauri. If you go to the far top right, you got out of Sparta, go into Sparta and go to Sparta 4, which is right here. This also has a high density of wildlife that you can find all over the planet with lots of XP that you can farm by doing this method. And that's method one, which is by far the easiest. You could do it right when you start your game and you land on the first moon and you can start killing uh, alien life forms, farming them, getting organic material and leveling up quite quickly. But as we well know, when you start getting higher level of these perks in the game, there will be requirements that you'll have to meet before you can unlock the next level. And so what is the second method that we can use to farm XP that might be a little bit more flexible in how we're leveling up our perks. And that is doing bounties off a bounty board that doesn't ever run out of bounties. The best place I found to do this is going to be The Rock, which is the Freestar Ranger headquarters. Anytime you take a bounty mission and complete it, it will automatically refresh on this mission board. And you get to this by going to the Cayenne system in the overall settled systems, which is right here northeast of Alpha Centauri and Sol. Come here and then go down to the planet Aquila. Go to Aquila and then land on Aquila City. Now, the main story will eventually take you here in the first 10, 20% of it. You'll have to come here anyways. And there will be a, a situation that happens here at the bank that you'll have to resolve. Resolve it properly and with good conscience. And you'll be able to gain access to the Free Star Rangers headquarters here, The Rock. Head inside, go to the right, go up the stairs. And the first part of the Free Star Rangers program has you talk to this woman here, Emma Wilcox, and she will tell you to prove yourself 
by utilizing their mission board here, the Freestar Rangers mission board. What's great about this mission board is it always has the quest that you need. Every time you complete one, either destroy the Clemson fleet or take out the commanders or captains of an outlaw gang, these will automatically refresh for you. So say, for example, you're trying to get to Class C ships with piloting and you want to get all the way down to here. To level up each one of these perks, you have to complete destroying enemy ships. And this goes very quickly with this method. You can just come to the Freestar Ranger board, take the one mission that requires you to kill a Crimson Fleet captain, accept it, and then go to the marker and fly all the way out there, destroy the plant, the ship, and come back. And what's great is if you're on a save file that hasn't progressed the Freestar Ranger program, you can actually just use this quest itself to fast travel back to Aquila. So you go and you go to this, this here, you click this and go to where it tells you to go, destroy the ship, bring up your quest log, go down to deputized, hit R on this, and it'll take you right back to Aquila. And in a minute or a minute and a half, you can be destroying a, a single ship, which you're destroying anywhere from 60 to 70 plus ships an hour. Every single one of them gives you credits. You can even board them, steal their ship, sell their ship, take the contraband on board and just do them repeatedly over and over. If you need lots of kills for weapon leveling or for melee leveling, you can take the outlaw, uh, programs here, quickly complete them, use the deputized quest in your quest log to quickly fast travel back to Aquila and do that over and over and over, and these will never run out. I also find these outlaw missions to be great because there are tons of extra resources. You can collect all the weapons that you get when you kill all the enemies, but also you can take a bunch of damage and use med kits, which helps you level up things like medicine or defenses. All of these perks you can very easily level up in combat with these bounty missions. And that is the second best method and probably the most well-balanced because it gives you the ability to level your perks while also getting credits and XP at the same time. So we went through the easiest method for leveling. We went through the most balanced method for leveling. Now, what is the actual best level le method for leveling? How can I level the absolute fastest with the most disregard for anything else in our way. The fastest way for leveling in Starfield, if you're trying to get to the max possible level and get all the perks, is going to be crafting at your outpost. Which you do by either creating crafting stations in your outpost or having your ship docked at your outpost on a landing pad and using crafting stations on it as well. But if you go to things like the industrial workbench, you'll notice that when you craft anything in the game with the materials that you have available, you craft one of these and you do get a little bit of XP. So what happens if you were to farm a bunch of the materials and take this all the way up and constantly spam experience in order to get what you need from this? You can just very easily just spam this over and 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 over until you will level up all the way to maximum. So for this method, I recommend using the industrial workbench and then finding materials that require two very basic crafting ingredients that you can find on any major planet. Adaptive frame is what I recommend because it includes iron and aluminum as its requirements. As you can see in the top right corner here, you can also do the iso-centered magnet, which is cobalt and nickel. The mag pressure tank requires aluminum and nickel, and all of these are very easy to farm almost anywhere in the settled systems. You can even do reactive gauge, which is aluminum and copper, or the tau grade rheostat, which is beryllium and copper as well. So let's say you want to craft the iso-centered magnet, which requires cobalt and nickel. One place I'd recommend doing this is go to the Indum system, which is right here just southeast of Alpha Centauri. Very easy to access. Go down to the Indum system and to the top of the solar system on the Indum 3 area here off this gas giant, there's going to be Indum 3B. And if you go to Indum 3B and scan it, you'll notice that there is going to be a high concentration of iron, high concentration of nickel. But if you go to certain spots, you can actually find cobalt and nickel in the same actual location. And you want to run around and create an outpost until you find a spot that has both of what you're looking for. You can very easily test this by going in the top right corner and going to extractors. When you go to cobalt and you're looking on where to place it, or if you're looking for placing down an actual outpost here. You can see in the top left what resources are available around you. Find a spot that has both cobalt and nickel or aluminum and copper or whatever combination you're doing for whatever crafting material you're trying to create. And then just set up harvesters for both of those materials. So if you want to do cobalt and nickel to do the isocentered magnet, you want to create both of those and then create storage that holds on to both of these. Another great spot for cobalt and nickel is in the Vega system, which is north of Alpha Centauri in the top left of the settled systems. Come down to Vega, go over to Vega 2, and then on the far right side is Vega 2E down here in the bottom right. So take Vega 2E, and if you scan it, it I have level zero scanning on this playthrough, so I won't be able to see the cobalt on here, but you can find it with higher level. 
And you can see there's a ton of nickel available. You can do cobalt and nickel here. And if you're looking for a nice combination of iron and aluminum, if you go to Alpha Centauri and down to the bottom right of it, the southeast, you'll find the Linnaeus system. And going to the bottom of the left, which you'll find Linnaeus 4, go to the moon Linnaeus 4b. And on this is a high time dilation rock based planet that has both aluminum and iron on it. Once you've found a location that has the two resources that you want in one single location, you'll want to build an outpost and then start your harvesting. In the outpost builder mode, you notice that there's gonna be a ground area that has the note, no, like denotes where the resource actually is. You try to find some that are close by, though it's not required as long as they're both within the same outpost you'll be able to deal with it that way. But when you use the specific extractor, you can see where the area is for the resource itself. And you want to set up to maybe three to four of these to get this going, depending on what level of outpost engineering you have. If you're serious about this method or just in general, I do recommend getting outpost engineering as you level up outpost engineering under science. This will allow you to make bigger storage containers, more efficient power generators, and also more efficient extractors that get you more resources quickly. You want to power these extractors, and the best way to do that is by selecting in the top right corner the best power output for that specific planet, and you test this by going through all the different options you have for power, solar, or wind, and then look in the top left corner, and you'll see how much power each one generates, and that tells you what the planet is good at. It might be better at wind, or there might be more solar radiation, so maybe you want a solar power generator. But get a bunch of them inside of the radius, for the outpost and start stacking those up until you have enough power to extract the resources you need. Find the location where the resources are and try to spread out your extractors so that they can get the best coverage as possible. Some of them you can't place too close together unless you have the more efficient options of this. But you place these down and these will start generating the resources that you need to craft the materials to level yourself up. And depending on your level of outpost engineering, select your largest storage container, put it near the extractors, and then have those extractors start feeding that output into those specific containers. Since the extractors themselves have a tiny amount of storage on them, but you want to be pulling that out of them so they're always extracting. And the easiest way to do this is to select the actual uh, extractor itself. And on PC, you can right click to create an output link. You can also go up to the extractor itself and hold E and it'll allow you to go to the quick menu and select an output link, but it's easier in this higher level version and have it set over into a single container by pressing E. And now everything this extractor creates will go into the container that it fits into. And you wanna take advantage of the output system that will very easily link things together. I've spaced out these containers so I can show you how it works. But you can very easily stack these together to make them cleaner. I just want you to see the lines that come out of it. So for this, you wanna take the extractor and feed the output link into the first uh, container here. Then you wanna create another output link and send that over into the second container, create another output link and send that over to the third container. Now what happens when there's things linked in a chain like this is it will always fill the last link in the output link first and then slowly work its way back until everything in the link is completely full. So if this is generating cobalt here, it's gonna create one cobalt and send it immediately over to this container here. When this fills up, it'll start filling up this container. When this fills up, it'll fill up this container. And a last resort, it will fill up the small storage that exists on the extractor itself. But of course, you can very easily have these containers linked right next to each other. Just when you want to do an output link, move over until it highlights the one next to it, press E, it'll select it, and you don't have to worry about it, and then kind of go through all of those there. I just wanted to make sure I spread them out so you can actually see that the links are actually there. From there, you have a choice, whether you're going to be crafting inside the outpost itself or whether you're going to be crafting on your ship. If you're crafting on the out inside the outpost itself, hopefully they fix it soon. But sometimes you run into this bug where you can't actually interact with the crafting station. The only way I've found to fix this is just by saving my game and closing down the desktop and looting back up, and you'll have that. And this will gain access to whatever is in storage within a reasonable distance of the building itself. And then you can go about just actually creating a whole boatload of items and making tons and tons of experience. And to do this, I recommend just clicking on the item you're creating, have your cursor here at the maximum level so that it can fill it up right away. Press E, click, press E, and just keep doing it over and over and over, and then get as much experience as you want. You can spam this easily to get hundreds of thousands of experience every single minute as you're just spamming here and clicking. And if you run out of resources, you can just go to a bed or a chair of any kind that you place down in your actual habitat or inside your ship, sleep or sit and wait for 24 hours, let all of that kind of come back up. So you can go into a chair, sit down, wait, let it fill up all the extractors again, and then just craft, 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 and then do it again over and over until you're level 500. If you decide to go for the ship route, which is probably a little bit easier and more mobile, you'll want to create a landing pad inside your outpost. 
that looks like this. It's the landing pad with ship builder, so it's big enough to fit your ship. And then right next to it, you wanna create a transfer container, which will be built right inside of the storage area. It's the transfer container in the top right, and it looks like this. As long as this is next to your ship, you can very easily load things on and off of your ship. And all you have to do is just create a link between those containers that have the materials you want and have it finish inside the transfer container as the last option in the output links. And that will be able to send it directly into the ship. And on the ship, you can craft as much as you want. If for some reason you don't have a ship that has crafting benches on it, you can very easily go to any ship builder or control console or and go into the view and modify ships, go to the uh, the ship builder itself, go to the habitats and find any habitat that has the engineering bay denotion on it, which tells you that it's going to have all of the crafting that you need in order to do that. The next question becomes, what do you do with all the things that you've crafted? Well, if all you care about is XP, you can just destroy it or throw it on the ground and ignore it forever because you got the XP that you wanted. But if you want to be a little bit more efficient, but a little bit slower in XP gain, you can sell these to vendors. I do have a video on the awesomeness of the backpack that you get from the Mantis Quest line. This pack itself comes with a stat on it, which gives you 75% less O2 when running while encumbered. This means that you drain less oxygen while you're running around while encumbered. And if you progress the story a little bit, there is a special power that allows you to reset and give you infinite stamina. So you can actually get to like 5,000 mass on your character, run around freely. When you get too low on oxygen, just refresh it with your power and then keep running and go and sell to all the vendors that you want. Now, most vendors do have a max limit of how much they can sell, but one of the best vendors in the game, if you don't already Already know this is going to be in the wolf system it's right next to alpha centauri and soul just northeast of that is going to be the wolf system but the reason this system is so awesome is you can go to a location called the den which is right here in this system and this system is not scanned which means going to the den is by far the best place to sell your contraband as well as your other items which you'll see in a second and as you see when you arrive at the den there is no scan for contraband so you can very easily just come to the den board it and sell contraband without having any worry. You don't need shielded cargo. It's one of the best places to sell. Go ahead, dock in the den and go inside. And as soon as you go inside, go forward past the ship services and immediately turn left and you'll find the trade authority. But not only do, can you sell contraband here to this guy in the, the den without having to be scanned at all, one of my favorite parts about this vendor is his default uh, amount of credits. If you see in the top right corner of the screen, he every time he resets, starts with 11,000 credits. Most vendors in the game start between 4,000 and 5,000 credits as their max, which means if you're trying to sell a lot of stuff, you have to wait more often before you can get their vendor credits back to sell. But this guy, not only does he buy contraband without being scanned, he also starts with 11,000 credits. So you're trying to offload a lot of items, come to the den, dump everything here, and then go to one of these chairs that's right next to him, wait 24 to 48 hours until his vendor has reset, sell everything else again, wait again, and just keep selling that infinitely as you go along. By the way, if you are trying to offload a bunch of stuff with a vendor, what I recommend is always going through and then before you sell everything, buy the necessary items you know you're going to need a lot of. So go and buy ship parts that you can use to repair your ship when you're in combat, buy the panacea that removes status effects, buy med packs, buy the trauma kits, buy the emergency packs, buy anything that you need a lot of always, like ammo and stuff like that. So you're just buying the necessary items, which then gives you more money that you can use to sell to him and get that money back. But it's stuff you're going to be buying anyways. And that's it. That's three major methods to farm a lot of XP in Starfield, one that anyone can use if they don't want to try and min-max this with the crafting method, one that's more about gameplay and actually playing the game, and then obviously the most maximum efficiency possible by crafting and getting insane amounts of XP to level up that you possibly can. If you found value in the video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people, and I'll see you on my live stream. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content, link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.